Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master on a daily basis. Thank you for joining me as we continue to explore this theme, expect delays. You'll see that sign sometimes on the expressway when traffic is stalled and backed up or something, some event is happening, or there might be some construction on the road, and there's a sign which says expect delays. And in life, we dream, we envision, we plan, but sometimes there are some delays. But the powerful point that, to ponder what we learned several days ago is that a delay is not a denial. Amen. Well, Jarius, we've been talking about Jarius. Jarius begged Jesus to come to his house. He's the president of the synagogue in Capernaum because his daughter, who's 12 years old, is sick at the point of death. And there's still hope if Jesus can arrive. The only problem in, in, in route, there's a big crowd around Jesus that is uh, inhibiting Jesus and Jairus from getting to the, his daughter. In addition to that, there's a sick woman who's been hemorrhaging for 12 years who comes up and touches the hem of Jesus's garment. She's healed. Jesus talks to her. She gives her testimony. Uh, there's another delay. So you've got two delays. We get impatient, don't we, with delays because we want what we want when we want what we want. But if you're not ready for delays, you're not ready for life because there will be some delays as you are uh, attempting to get to your destination in life. Well, the delays were costly because we are told in verse 35 that after Jesus healed the woman and after the woman had given her testimony, Jesus said to her, my daughter, your faith, verse 34, has made you well. Go in peace. Be healed of your troubles. While Jesus was saying this, some messengers came from Jairus' house and told him, your daughter has died. Why bother the teacher any longer? Whenever you hear the word death, that means it's over. Doctors can go home. It's over. Pack up your bags. It's over. But please notice how Jesus responded in verse 36. Verse 36 says, Jesus paid no attention to what they said. My brothers and sisters, that is a powerful point to ponder. Learning how not to pay attention to certain people. You know, I think that somehow that the people who came to Jairus and told him, don't bother Jesus anymore. In other words, don't, don't pray, don't trust Jesus anymore because your daughter is dead. You know what? I think they got a, a perverted sense of satisfaction bringing bread, bad news to Jairus. And there will always be some people who love to be the bearer of bad news. They love it. Somehow they have this mixed up notion that you being down is their way of being up. That's not the case. The best way to get up in life is by helping other people get up. But these people brought, brought bad news and there will be people who will bring bad news to you in order to destroy your hope, to, in order to sabotage your faith. But notice again, Jesus's response. Jesus, verse 36, it says, but Jesus, paid no attention to what they said. And brothers and sisters, anytime you attempt to do anything of significance, there will always be the naysayers and people who say things that are so cruel and so insensitive. The key to dealing with these people is don't pay attention to them. Listen, whoever gets your attention gets you. And you do not want people to have that type of power and control over you. Jesus paid no attention to them. For some of us, paying no attention to them is not the people on the outside, like the people who brought the best message, brought the negative message and report to Jarius. Sometimes the people we need not to pay attention to is ourselves. Because sometimes in our head, we surrender to negative thinking. And we start thinking, well, there's no hope. Well, not only do you not have to pay attention to the negative people outside of you, but you have to pay, choose not to pay attention to the negative thoughts that sin tend to fly across our mind. There's no hope. This can't be fixed. Even though you've got God, who is the resurrection and the life, Jesus Christ, right next to you, and you're sitting here saying, there is no hope. Be careful about listening to voices in your own head.
You remember Elijah? One of the reasons why Elijah wanted to quit and give up and commit suicide, Jezebel was trying to kill him. And uh, he said in 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse 4, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down on a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, it's enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. In other words, what Elijah is saying is that I'm trying to succeed in, in getting your people to serve you, God. And, and, and look, I'm no better than my father's. In other words, Joshua couldn't do it and Moses couldn't do it and Gideon couldn't do it and Abraham couldn't do it. So since they couldn't do it, I know that I would not be able to do it either. And sometimes that's in his head. He's telling himself he can't do it. He can't do it. And uh, maybe you're telling yourself, I cannot do it. Listen to me. Here's the powerful point to ponder. I want to give you this powerful point to ponder. This is the takeaway of today's teaching. And that is in order to tune in to that which is worth full, you must be willing to tune out that which is worthless. And for Jesus, he paid no attention to them. And you can't tune in to the worth full until you say, I'm not paying attention to the worthless. That's how Abraham got his blessing. He was delayed. He was delayed 25 years seeing the fulfillment of a promise that he and his wife, Sarah, would have a child. And I'm sure those thoughts came in, in in Abraham's mind. I'll never have a son. I'll never have an eyes. I'll never have a descendant. Descendant, Because remember, Abraham was old and Sarah was old. They were uh, geriatric couples. Sarah had a barren body. She was barren. So, you know, all everything was against him. But guess what? He kept believing. He had faith. So Paul says in Romans chapter four, verses 17 and 18, he says, as the scripture has said, I have made you talking about Abraham, the father of many nations. So the promise is good in the sight of God in whom Abraham believed. Abraham believed God. He didn't believe the negative report. He believed God, the God who brings the dead to life. And just like God brought Abraham who's, who, to life, or whose body was dead uh, and Sarah's body was dead. Uh, she's 90, he's 100, they're physically dead, but God gave them life. And the same God who gave Abraham life is the same Jesus who was with Jairus, who even though he gets the bad news that his daughter is dead, can bring her back to life. And because he believed, in spite of the evidence, the God who brings the dead to life, whose, watch this, command brings into being what does not exist. I can bring into existence what does not exist because he believed that he served that kind of God. Abraham believed and hoped even when there was no reason for hoping. So he became the father of many nations. Now you take Abraham's name out of there and you put your name in there so it could read. Let's read it for you. Um, let's meet, I'm going to use my name. You use your name. Kevin believed and hoped. And even when there was no reason for hope because there was no money, no resources, he became the president of a thriving HBC university, even though maybe there's no evidence for it. In fact, just as the scripture says, your descendants will be as many as the stars. And there was no evidence. And there was no evidence, my brothers and sisters, that there was any hope for Jairus and his 12 year old daughter because the messenger said she's dead, but Jesus paid no attention to them. Who are you paying attention to? God or your circumstances? You cannot tap into the worthful if you're constantly listening to the worthless. You keep believing. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today and bless your people and give us the wisdom not to pay attention to the negative messengers and even the negativity that's in our own head. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me with another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't, don't have a church home, I'd like to extend an invitation to you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. You can be a virtual disciple wherever you are in the country. Just email us at newstart at sclab.org. 
and we'll get back with you. Don't forget, this is Wednesday Bible study, and I hope to see you tonight as we study God's work tonight. And you can join us online too. So join us tonight in Bible study. But until then, look, you be safe and be sane and never forget that God is on in control. Don't forget to take the vaccine, get your booster, and I will see you tonight in church. Be blessed. Take care.